Okay, so previously we've added the possibility to add an avatar to our posts and to add multiple images to our posts. And now let's see how it will work in production. Basically, I have uh, pushed an application to Heroku at this URL and joined the migrations. And I, now I will try to create a post. So I'm going to create a post. I will edit it a title, a post. Okay, I will add an avatar. So it can be one file. And I'm going to add uh, a few other files as uh, images. And I create the post. So it is uploading. That's why it is taking so long. And yeah, it says that the post was created. And you see, our avatar was saved. Our images were also saved. But if we read the Heroku documentation, this is not for long. So it seems that it works. But if we restart the server, if we run Heroku restart, or automatically every 24 hours uh, by itself, when Heroku restarts, all these files that we saved in the local storage on Heroku are going to just disappear. So now I have written Heroku restart, and I will refresh the page. It is going to connect to Heroku now. And uh, let's see what happens. Now see it is still loading because I have just written Heroku restart, so it is uh, kind of rebooting the application. Okay, you see, so all uh, our files have vanished. So they are not previewable. They were basically removed from our local storage on Heroku. So uh, on Heroku, we basically have this kind of application and it also has this storage uh, folder and it gets removed every 10, 24 hours or after a Heroku restart. And uh, that's why you definitely don't want to keep any files in the storage folder on Heroku you will want to use an external cloud storage. Now, the storage that I use uh, most often is AWS S3, and now we're going to go through how to use it and how to install it. So if you go to the active storage documentation on Rails guides, you will also see some hints about it. So we can configure the active storage service to be either Amazon or local or whatever. Let's go into our Rails application. I'm going to go to config, and here we have uh, uh, storage via ML. And here we can add settings for Amazon, for example. And if we go to our environments, we have development RB, we have production. So we are going to configure which active storage service we want to use in development and production. Now, the most common way is to use local storage for development and to use uh, something like Amazon in production. So here you see config active storage service local. Now by default, we have local service set for active storage in production. So we are going to have Amazon here, Amazon, like this. OK, and now we've set Amazon here. And we need to go to storage via ML and add our Amazon credentials. So I'm going to uncomment this. And the Amazon service for storing uh, uh, files is called S3. And now you see we need to have an access key ID, a secret access key, a region, and a bucket name. So at the moment, I'm already logged into an account on Amazon. And I'm going to go to services. And here in storage, we have this S3 service. So it's loading. OK. And here we have this button to create a bucket. So now let's create a new bucket. A bucket is basically a folder in which you can keep uh, files and read and write to the bucket. So let's name it Super Rails. Okay, I will select a region. Well, I'm doing everything in this region. You can select a region that is closer to where you are. And uh, let's continue. We are not going to change any other settings. I'm going to create a bucket. Okay, and we have created a bucket. Now, what is a bucket? Basically, it is a container where we can have files. We don't have any files here yet, but if we go to one of the other buckets, for example, to this bucket, we see we have a few files. I can uh, download one of the files. I can uh, try to uh, open one of the files. So here is one of the files that I uh, <laughs> uh, uploaded. Okay, so 
on S3, they have created a bucket named Super Rails. So they can go to storage via ML and say, what is the region? The region is uh, EU central one. And the bucket name is Super Rails. So it is Super Rails. And now we need to get an access key ID and secret access key. Now for this, we are going to need the uh, identity management. So we're going to go to services and somewhere here we have uh, IAM. Let's see. Well, I found it here in recently visited. I'll try to go in search. Yeah, here we have IAM. And we are going to create uh, new credentials for accessing the uh, AWS S3. Now I have three users. I'm going to create one more user. I'm going to add a user. Let's uh, name it Super Rails S3. And it is going to have programmatic access. Let's just name it Super Rails, okay? And further. So now we are going to attach some existing policies, basically uh, what a user with the, these uh, API keys can do. So we're going to go to S3 and we're going to say Amazon S3 full access. Next, review, create user. Okay, so I have created a user. Here we have the access key ID. I can copy it and uh, I can paste it here, but I'm not going to do it because we need to use uh, credentials for this. You see, it automatically says that we can use the credentials. We shouldn't keep uh, our API keys uh, just in the open like this. So I'm going to go to editor, Vim Rails credentials, edit. And here you see by default, we even have uh, the prompts for AWS. So we are going to uncomment it. We're going to say AWS, then we have access key ID. Okay, and now we get the secret access key. So I press show, here it is. I paste it here. Okay, I made a mistake and deleted something that shouldn't have been deleted. I will do it once again. So I open the file, I press I, I uncomment. Now I copy the access key ID. And now I copy the secret access key. Okay, now I press escape, column, WQ, to exit and save and enter. Okay, file encrypted and saved, I can check. You see, it was saved. And we added our credentials. So with this access key ID and secret access key, we can uh, access our S3 storage on uh, Amazon. So I'm going to close and uh, it should kind of work. So we have uh, said in development, we want to use local, but we are not going to use local, we're going to use Amazon. So we're going to use to try to use Amazon S3 for our local development. Now in storage via ML, we gave the path. So we have Amazon, access key ID, secret access key, region, bucket. So it should kind of work. Now let's start our server and see if it works. Okay, I'm going to refresh. And uh, it says missing service adapter for S3. Yes, we should install the S3 gem. So I think somewhere here there is, yes, here's the reference for the gem, AWS SDK S3. And we're going to add this gem to our gem file to make it work like this. And now we run bundle. Now we start the server and it should work. Okay. So I'm going to, let's say, try to create a new post with S3. I'm going to add an avatar, one file, images, a few files, 
create post. And it was kind of created. Let's see if it was saved on S3. We can do it in the, the AWS console. We can go to storage, S3. Go to our bucket. Here is our bucket. And you see, we have three files that were saved here. So I can open one of the files, object actions, open. And you see, we managed to save our files to a cloud storage and preview them. Now, this way, if we go into our logs, we also see that uh, we managed to save the files on AWS S3. So here is an URL that was generated temporarily for this file. We can open the file and you see this on AWS S3. So now even in our local environment, we are using S3 for storing items. Looks nice. Now let's go back and see if it will work in production. So I'm going to go to production.rb and you see we already have Amazon set. Before by default it was local, now we say Amazon. And in development, well, for development purposes, you will most likely want to use local long term. So let's see if it works. What have we done? We have added the gem AWS SDK S3 to our gem file. Then in development RB, we tried adding Amazon. In production, we replaced local with Amazon. In storage YML, we uh, added our pocket, our region, and added our credentials in the credentials file. And that's basically it. So let's save our changes. I will say git status, git add all, uh, git commit main uh, AWS S3 for file storage. Okay, now I'm going to push and push to Heroku, git push Heroku main, and we'll see if it works. Okay, so we have pushed our application to Heroku and let's see if it works. I'm going back to Heroku. I will try to create a new post. Now it's loading, kind of restarting. I'll go to posts. Yeah, we should wait a bit, apparently, after pushing to Heroku. Okay, actually I got this application error. Now, why did I get it? It is because I pushed my application to Heroku, but I did not push my master key to Heroku. So here I have my master key and I need to copy it into the Heroku settings. So I'm going to type in this command, Heroku config set Rails master key. And in Heroku, we're going to set the Rails master key as the master key that we have uh, in our config. So I'm going to add this. You see, we've set the Rails master key on Heroku as the master key that we have in this file. So now it should work. I'm going to restart once again, refreshing the page, and uh, with the new master key that we added to Heroku, it should work. Okay, so the application started. Now I'll try to create a new post. I'm going to add uh, an image here. I'm going to add a few images here. Okay, and create the post. And let's see if it works. Let's also have a look at our logs. Heroku logs tail. So you see, all the files seem to have been uploaded. Now, were they uploaded to Heroku? Let's, oh, I mean to S3, let's check. I'm going to S3, Super Rails. And here you see we have a few additional newly created items that were created 1415, so just now. And it seems to work. So going to the logs, let's have a look. We see the Rails active storage. And you see we get this downloaded file from key. So basically uh, the images were uploaded to our S3 
And now when we restart our Heroku instance, the images uh, will still be available. I can type Heroku restart, Heroku restart. And when we were storing the images initially on our local Heroku storage, after restart, the images were not available. But now as we're storing the images not on Heroku, but on the S3 cloud storage, everything should be available. So I have restarted Heroku. I will now refresh this page and I expect it to work correctly. So that the images will be available. Now it is still restarting. And voila, the images are available. So what have we done? We went to our AWS account, went to S3 and created a new bucket. And we created an IAM role to which we gave access to S3. And that's basically it. So this is the basics of making the application work with a cloud provider like Amazon S3. Thank you for being with me. Have a nice day.